The next step in the budget SB08 tool changer is here. Today, we design it and make a modular spool rack with built-in filament runout detection. In this series, we are collaborating with DraftShift to convert a Solvol SB08 budget Voron clone into a tool changer. Step by step, the project is coming along and the full playlist is linked in the description. Before we start, a quick word on this. Thank you so much to those that have already supported me for November. And if you do have a couple of dollars spare, my page is linked below. Let's move on with a reminder of the goals of this build and a word on choice. My aim for this build is to do things as simply and cheaply as possible. That means using additional SB08 tool heads because it keeps things like the firmware and wiring more simple. But I understand not everybody likes those tool heads, so let's talk about choice. Recently, I was contacted by Micro Swiss, offering me their Flowtech hot end for the SB08 to test for free. But I declined because the philosophy of my build is to do things as cheap as possible. But if your priorities are different, it's good to know that options do exist. And there's also options in terms of the whole tool changer build, like this one from 3D Customs. If you're not afraid to spend more money in changing components, then maybe this option is best for you. And more recently, Jonathan from The Next Layer announced a seven tool head build of the SV08, with the philosophy being money is no object. That's yet more choice if you're considering this conversion. And even more recently, my patrons shared with me this video from Engineers Grow. This is also a tool changer, but more specifically, only the hot end is changed and the extruder stays on the tool head. I love the innovation here, and while it's too late to change the direction of this SV08 build, we have spoken and have agreed to collaborate in converting one of my other 3D printers to this type of design in the future. My point here is that none of us are in competition. You as the viewer can pick and choose components from each build to suit your tastes. With that in mind, let's look at my solution for adding extra filament spools. The SV08 as delivered only holds a single spool on the side of the frame. Just below that, we have a simple filament runout sensor, a reverse burden tube with an inline splitter, making it easier to extract any broken filament. We can't add more spools in the same way as the factory one, as it's going to be Tangle City and there's no mounting holes either. I have a Prusa XL and that gives an opportunity to look at another solution where the spools are mounted on the side of the machine, but in my opinion, this is one of the weaknesses of the XL. Let's demonstrate what I'm talking about by loading up some TPU and using the XL for combination prints of multi-material and flexibles is one of the reasons I wanted the machine. From the side, we have to feed the filament into the first set of filament runout sensors. This requires a bit of force as we push on the filament and for TPU, that's a problem as it just wants to flex in your hands. Eventually I got it and now I have to reach to the back of the machine and start feeding the TPU through the long reverse belt and PTFE tube on the back of the machine. And it really is quite long. It takes a fair amount of time to get it through to the top of the tool heads where we have another filament runout sensor awaiting. With the rigid filament, we can just push this in. It will trigger and start the load procedure automatically. But with TPU, it just flexes inside the PTFE tube. It doesn't matter how much you push, the filament will just flex and buckle instead of going in. So that means every time I want to load TPU, I have to decouple the PTFE tube so I can get a good grip on the filament, feed it into the top of the tool head, and then start the load filament sequence from the LCD menu. And when that's done, the reverse Bowden tube can go back in and I'm ready to print, but honestly, I find this all pretty cumbersome. So my plan to keep everything short is to make sure I clear the umbilicals at the front of the machine, mounting all of the filament spools across the front. Just to make it clear, let's look at the CAD from side on. The main thing we need clearance for is when the spare tools are parked up the top. So each spool is going to have to sit a fair way forward to clear this. I want the entry to the reverse Bowden tube to sit right at the front where it's easily accessible and then curl up and over the top to the waiting tool head. When the tool is active and at its furthest extremities, there should be plenty of slack in the PTFE tube to reach these locations. Before I started designing, I needed to pick the hardware that I would design around, and I wanted some structure at the base of my spools, picking 2020 extrusion because it's fairly affordable, versatile, and one of these four packs should be enough for the entire build. My plan was to support the spools from the underside on rollers, just like a Bamboo Lab AMS. Not great if you have smashed spools, but not really a problem for anyone else. So a bunch of 608 ball bearings for the rollers, 
some PTFE tube to guide the filament, and this is a normal tube. What I've linked has a much larger internal diameter for reduced friction. Finally, some filament runout sensors. You can substitute something cheaper here, but I went for Big Tree Tech Smart Filament Sensors version 2. These will detect if filament is missing, as well as if it stops moving through the sensor. You can feed them from either direction, and they also have this little latch in the middle, which when you slide to the side, opens up the path for the filament, making loading much easier. With all of the ingredients ready, let's see what I designed and how it goes together. I just want to start by saying that this job was made so much easier because of the full CAD model available on GitHub. The next thing to say is that this design is modular, inspired by the draft shift modular dock seen in part 4. It uses a few components repeated over and over, which means it can scale up from two tool heads all the way to six. Our first components are the 2020 extrusions. There's two at the base, they need to be 500mm long, which is hopefully the length they'll come. Or if you're like me, you've got some of it lying around which you can recycle for a project like this. Optional, but highly recommended, is using an M5 tap to add a thread to the last 10mm of each end. The first printed components are the rollers. You'll need a pair per tool head, and each end gets a 608 bearing hammered into place. These are a pretty firm fit, but the tolerance should be right that the part doesn't break as the bearing is forced in. The next component I've called the span bracket, and you'll need a pair per tool head. On the flat side, you'll notice that there's two holes, but one is larger than the other. And that larger hole receives a single M3 Voron spec threaded insert. It needs to be melted into place so it sits flush with the surface. These parts are designed, so when you put them back to back, that ends up being a threaded insert on each side to bolt them together. The parts covered so far simply press fit together to form a sub-assembly that can hold a spool. All the ones I've tested fit and roll nicely. The filament sensors need to be mounted, and again I'm thankful for Big Tree Tech putting a step file on their GitHub. That makes it a straightforward task to design a mount that matches the three mounting holes. We have a printed sensor mount seen here in yellow. You'll need one per spool, and like all of the other parts you're seeing here, I've managed to design it so it doesn't need support. This filament sensor comes with all required supporting hardware, including three M3 bolts that you can use to attach the sensor to this printed piece. The final components are a mounting bracket on each end, and these were largely designed in context of the main assembly so I could match up mounting holes and put in channels to fit nicely onto the extrusions. Because of this, they are designed to be a pretty snug fit. You need to line up the channel on top and then flex the part down until it snaps satisfyingly into position. You can also see I designed in holes for M3 bolts to go through and further secure it to the frame. But don't worry, this part is still easy to remove if required. Let's assemble all of the parts, and I'd recommend putting on the two end brackets just to keep the two 2020 extrusions in line. If you did tap the center holes of the extrusion, that's going to come in really handy about now. We take pairs of span brackets and rotate them so they're mirrored. Two M3 by 8mm bolts will then hold the two together. Now it's just a matter of placing each set of brackets in between the two extrusions, sliding on the rollers in between them, and sliding the brackets down to clamp the rollers securely. We repeat these steps for as many spools as we require. Now is probably a good time to make sure all of the rollers are rotating smoothly, and if they are, we're going to secure the brackets properly with M5 by 8mm bolts and T-nuts. It's pretty hard to access some of these holes, so now's a good time to temporarily take off the end mounts, so you can carefully flip it upside down and get access. You probably won't need bolts the whole way along, in fact I zigzag them just to save on hardware. And despite doing this, everything is still plenty secure. Those end mounts can go back on, but you should purposely not put the bolt the whole way in. Same for inserting more T-nuts and bolts on the underside. Just get the thread started and do them up loosely for now. We put the whole assembly roughly into position, lining up the top slots and then flexing down the side brackets until they snap into place. The end M5 bolts can then be tightened, as well as those on the underside of the end mounts. Some M3 by 8mm bolts can then go through into the frame, which should make the whole thing feel pretty rock solid. The mounts, with the filament runout sensors already attached, will then go onto the front of the 2020 extrusion using more M5 by 8mm bolts with T-nuts. And I've chosen to not have any coupling or PTFE tube at the bottom, as it ruins the feed angle. The final step is inserting the PTFE tube and running it down to its lowest extent so it's clear what length it needs to be trimmed to. The burning question is, how well does this work? In my opinion, the primary aims have been met. The majority of spools should be compatible as long as they're round. This includes the reusable bamboo lab spools, which are a little bit wider than others and just fit, and smaller diameter spools aren't a problem either. Access to the filament is right at the front and that makes it super easy to feed it through 
and the PTFE tube is a fair bit shorter than the XL, so I'm happy with that also. What's not working so well is how floppy the tube is when the tool head is right at the top. When the active tool is down at bed height, there's a lot less spare tube. I don't think it will get tangled, but it's still not ideal. And this is the disadvantage of having the PTFE tube and the cabling come from opposite sides. One thing the XL does really well is have the tube and the umbilical start and end in the same place, which means the two can be coupled together. To fix this, I'm most likely going to make a simple change by moving the position of the rack to the rear of the machine, just behind the cables. This will let the two be coupled together most of the way and keep the PTFE tube from flopping about. You'll have to reach a little bit further, but the function of loading unloading should be pretty much exactly the same. And because the design of my spool rack is modular, the only parts that will need a redesign and reprint are those mounting brackets on the end, so that should be a pretty simple job. And I can always release both versions so people have a choice. So while the original filament holder can be removed, there's more refinement to come, but that's just how this project works. For instance, the modular dock that you saw in part 4 is currently being updated by Justin with clever solutions to limit flex. Let's finish up with a budget update, and I think most of the money that you'll need to spend is already accounted for on this table. There's still some hardware related to the coupling of the tool head, but it's not expensive at all. So again, I feel we're still on track for correctly labeling this a budget build. Plenty of people have asked about the time investment for this build. And the truth is, in terms of design development and testing, there's a lot of hours that have gone in, but we hope to get it to the point where for people following along at home, it becomes a much more straightforward process. Also keep in mind that the price we're comparing to is for the Prusa XL kit, which is gonna require a bit of time to put together. Thank you to the DraftShip team for their continued collaboration. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy dodgy mustache growing and tool changer building. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.